Hi, uh, my name is Alan Doran. This video is about decomposition. Before you begin, make sure you've understood the boat problem and you've had a chance to try and solve it. Also, although it doesn't say so there, make sure you know about the basic and complex components of algorithms. Decomposition, the state or process of rotting, decay. You're probably thinking, yeah, what's that got to do with programming or computer science or algorithms? Well, in the natural world, when something rots or decays, it's broken down by bacteria and fungi into its simple components. And that's what we're interested in here as well. The idea that we can break complex problems down into simple components that hopefully we're able to solve. Here is the rear hub of a bicycle. If I gave you one of these and asked you to tell me how it worked, or if I asked you to fix it because it was broken, what's the first thing you'd do? Well, many of you would probably just say, nah, dunno, sorry, can't fix it. Those of you who are mechanically minded or interested in this kind of thing might start hunting around for one of these. This is an exploded diagram of the hub. It shows you all of the parts. Once you understand all of the parts of the hub, you can start to identify likely causes of problems because you can examine each part in turn and try and find why it may or may not be working. This is decomposition. We pull the hub down into its constituent parts and then try and work out where the fault lies. And when we're finished, we put the whole thing together to give us a working hub. And we can do the same with algorithms. Let's remind ourselves quickly about the boat problem. We've got a wolf, farmer, goat, cabbage and a river and they need to use the boat to get across to the other side of the river. However, there's only room in the boat for the farmer and one of the other articles and we can't leave the wolf and the goat together because the wolf eats the goat. If the farmer's not there, we can't leave the goat with the cabbage because the goat would eat the cabbage if the farmer's not there. So how can the farmer safely move his goods across the river? Well, we'd like to use decomposition to help us solve this problem. And we'll look at that over the next few minutes. So, we start with this problem. Solve the boat problem. Now, that's quite hard. I can't usually just expect you to say, yep, this is how you do it, here's the solution. It's a hard problem to solve. So, how can we use decomposition to understand this problem in a way analogous to how we understood the bicycle hub. That is, how can we break this boat problem solution down into parts so that we can look at each in turn and try and understand how we might solve it, put all the parts together and therefore give us a solution to the big problem we're trying to understand. Well, here is one way of decomposing the boat problem. Firstly, we list all the states, that is, all the possible positions for the farmer, the goat, the cabbage, and the wolf on either side of the river. That's all the states. Then we eliminate from the list of all the states the illegal states. The illegal states are ones, for instance, where the cabbage and the goat were left together alone, or where the wolf and the goat were left alone. After we've eliminated all the illegal states, we've just got a list of valid states. Now we want to find a list of transitions between the legal states we have left. That is, we want to know how we can go from one state in our list to the next. And finally, to finish the solution of the problem, we trace a path through all of these transitions between valid states from the initial state to the goal state. And when we find, when we find that path, we've solved the problem. So in this way, we've broken the difficult problem up into four simpler problems. And once we can solve those four simple problems, the result will be the solution to the boat problem. So this is decomposition at work. Now, listing all the states was the first thing we wanted to do. Here's one way we can represent this. You just enumerate all of the possible combinations of the components of the problem. You'll notice I've left out the boat here. The boat is just a, a vehicle, literally, for changing state. 
it's a transitional entity and it doesn't actually play a role in the puzzle except for restricting the number of things that can change from one side of the river to the other at any given time. So I've left the boat out. Here are a few of the states. Obviously there are a lot more than this. If you want to you can uh, write them all out on a sheet of paper. And now we'll just work with these few states. The dot dot dots represent unknown states or states I haven't depicted. So after we've listed all the states, the next thing we needed to do was eliminate illegal states where, for instance, the goat and the cabbage were left alone or the wolf and the goat were left alone. So here you can see the farmers on the left side of the river and over on the right side of the river we've got both the goat and the cabbage alone without the farmer. That's no good. And we've also got the wolf and the goat alone without the farmer. So this state is clearly illegal. We can't do it. The, the farmer would lose his cabbage uh, or maybe his goat if the wolf got to the goat before the goat got to the cabbage. Get rid of that one. Over here we've got the wolf and the goat alone on one side of the river and the farmer on the other. That's no good either because the wolf would eat the goat. So that's another illegal state. Now we've eliminated the illegal states from our list. The next thing we needed to do is find all the possible transitions between states. Now I've drawn some of these with arrows. Double-headed arrows indicate uh, a valid transition in either direction. Uh, Single-headed arrows indicate possible movement in only one direction. So we can see, for instance, top left, where we've got everything on the left-hand side of the river, it's possible for the farmer to take the goat across to the right-hand side of the river, leaving the cabbage and the wolf on the left. So that's a valid transition. And vice versa, from the top right state, where the goat and the farmer are on the right of the river, they could travel back across the river together in the boat so that everyone would be on the left. And that's the same with all of these arrows. Now I've represented some arrows between the uh, unrepresented or undepicted states as well just to show you that there are many connections between all of these states. Uh, it's a, a web, if you like, of transitions. Now, after we've found all the possible transitions, our aim is next to try and identify a path from the initial state to the goal state. So here's the initial state. That's everyone on the left side of the river. And at the bottom is the goal state. That's everyone on the opposite side of the river. So we want to find a path that leads from the initial state to the goal state. So one way we can do this is to sweep diagonally down to the right to this undepicted state, whatever that might be, following the green arrow. From here we can follow a path down again. From here we can go back up to the diagonal left to the next state and finally to the goal state. So this is one set of transitions or movements of the creatures backwards and forwards in the boat across the river. If you look carefully at the slide for a second you'll find that there are alternative ways we could have gone about this. Now we've just shown how to solve this problem pictorially but we can write this out as an algorithm also. So here once again are the four stages we need to solve the boat problem. List all the states, eliminate illegal states, find all possible transitions between states and then finally find a path that goes from the initial state to the goal state via the transitions between the legal states. So here is one way we could write this out in a sort of algorithmic notation. We've got these lists to start with. We've got something called all state list and we let all state list be assigned the value returned by find all states, which is a module that returns all of the possible states of the goats, um, of the goat, the wolf, the farmer, cabbage, and the river. So we ask the module find all states to calculate all of these states, and it gives it back to us, and we put the results, that list, into all state list, which holds all the states. The next thing to do is eliminate all the illegal states, and we want to do that from the all state list. So we call the module Eliminate Illegal States, giving it all state list to work with. And it returns to us another list. And this list just contains the valid states. So it's a new list with just the valid states. 
Now what we want to do is find all the transitions between the valid states. So we call this new module find transitions and we give it the valid state list and what it will do is run through the valid state list generating all of the transitions between the states it's given. And it will put this, or we will put this, into a list called transition list. Finally, we're looking for the solution to the puzzle. What we need to do is call something find path and we pass it the state list with all the valid states in it and the transition list which has the transitions between the valid states we also passed it our initial state and our goal state and this method find path will then try to find a path as we just did in the pictorial representation from the initial state to the goal state by searching through the transition list between valid states in the valid state list. Now you're probably wondering well that's fine all I've done is rephrase the problem I haven't actually explained how you might go about writing the algorithms for find all states, eliminate illegal states, find transitions or find path. I just did it and assumed it was easy. Well, it is quite easy. Let's have a look at this one, eliminate illegal states as an example, and you can try the rest in your own time. So, you'll recall we called, if you look at the top of the slide, eliminate illegal states passing it all of the states that we found in our puzzle and we put the results into valid state list. So the input top right there is all state list and the output is valid state list. So our module eliminate illegal states could be said to take a parameter called all state list and to return a result which we assign to the list valid state list. Now, eliminate illegal states is a method. So we write it out here to show how to, how to create it or how to solve this sub-problem of the boat problem. Firstly, we want to make a new list and we want an empty list. So we say valid state list equals empty list. And what we're doing here is just making up um, a new list called valid state list. And this is where we're going to keep the valid states to give back to the thing that called this module. And all we do in here is for each state in all state list, if the wolf is not alone with the goat and the goat is not alone with the cabbage, then we add this state to the valid state list. So we're going to go through all the states in the state list that we were given and we're going to pick out the ones that are valid and we'll add them to the valid state list. And when we've finished going through all of these, we just return the valid state list. Return means give the result back to the outside world, if you like. So input was all state list, output was valid state list, and eliminate illegal states is the way that we go from the input to the output. Now, remember, we create an empty list called valid state list and then we add to the valid state list all of the valid states we find within the all state list. Finally, when we've assembled the valid state list, we give this new list back to the outside world, that is the world outside of this module, and in the outside world we assign that to another list called valid state list. That's really all there is to the eliminate illegal states method. Try to write the other methods on your own. So in summary then, uh, decomposition just refers to breaking a problem down into simple parts. And the hope is that by doing this, when we look at the simple parts, we'll be able to understand how we can solve them. And then when we put these solutions or partial solutions together, we can rebuild the complete solution to a larger problem, just like we did in the case of the hub and as we can see here with the boat problem. Best of luck in trying to solve the boat problem. Thanks for watching.